Hi, I'm George Ellison with Acme Guitar Works. Uh, I wanted to show you a process we're going to do today on this neck. Uh, we had a customer call in and wanted to know what our process was for dealing with the sharp fret ends on a neck. And it just happens that this neck needs that done. This is a new neck, just took it off of a, a guitar we just took out of the box, but um, it does have sharp fret ends. And what happens uh, that causes this is that um, the wood has shrunk. Uh, shrunken across its width, uh, and this happens uh, with seasonal changes, fluctuations, and humidity levels. So when you're, you know, uh, uh, well, or it could just be that the thing has moved from one area of the world to another area of the world where a humidity, sort of relative humidity levels are, are, are pretty different. And so the wood shrinks, the frets don't shrink, and so the frets end up protruding out of the ends of the wood, and they're just uncomfortable. It's really easy to deal with this on a neck like this. This is off of a road-worn Strat. And of course, uh, we don't need to be too concerned about the finish here because, you know, hey, it's a road-worn, so it's already, the finish is already removed. Uh, if it were a, a guitar that had a, a maple fretboard where you're going to get into the maple a little bit, and it, if it has finish on it that is tinted like this, it's a little bit difficult to deal with. You just have to uh, do a little finish touch-up when you're done. Um, but if it's a rosewood fretboard or ebony, it's usually really, really simple because um, you're just going to get into the rosewood or the, or the ebony a little bit. And basically all we're going to do is just use a file. This is a Stumac file. I've had this thing forever. Uh, and it's, uh, it cuts very smoothly and it cuts uh, files cut on the forward stroke. So what we'll do is we'll just run this along the edge like this. And we literally have to go down until we're into the wood. I um, mean, you, you know, you, you could conceivably get uh, down to where you're just about to get into the wood, but from a practical standpoint, you can't do that. I mean, you're going to get into the wood a little bit, and that's uh, that's fine. But you can't stop shy of the wood, or else they're still going to be protruding a little bit. You know, you've got no no chance, no choice but to get all the way down. Um, I just do this on this bench. It's just convenient for this. Uh, we have this set up kind of like a woodworking bench. It's got this woodworking vise, and uh, so I we just bored these holes in here and have a little stop, like a like a dog on a. This would be like a woodworking bench, which we don't have. So I'll put a piece of leather here. Uh, actually, this one. Uh, this dowel goes in these holes, and it's just got a little area cut out. And uh, this has this dog that comes up like that and put a piece of leather in there just to protect the heel of the neck. Again, I'm a little less concerned about this neck than I would be if it were a brand new Tom Anderson guitar or something like that where, you know, you really want to make sure that you don't do uh, any, any damage to the finish. Uh, and I'm just going to tighten it up enough just to hold the thing. I just want it sort of held steady. And then I'm just going to use my thumb here sort of as a guide to make sure that I don't get up on, you know, I, what you definitely don't want is for this thing to accidentally kind of skate across the tops of the frets or you're going to have big gouges in the tops of the frets and have to do a fret level. But with this, I'll just do this like this and very quickly it will take them down and what happens is that uh, you can feel and you can hear the difference once you hit the wood and it's just something that comes with experience. Um, but we'll just do that, and then I'll, I'll do a little bit of a bevel. And Stu Mac makes a, a, a tool, it's just basically a block of material with a slot cut that holds a file at a particular angle. And it's made specifically for beveling fret ends, and there are different ways to do it. Um, but I do it by hand. Uh, I, I don't like very much bevel at all. I prefer just a little bit of bevel. I see a lot of fret ends that are really beveled, over beveled, and all that does is sort of cuts into your playable area on the frets. Um, so I like just a little bit of bevel, not much, and then round. if you round and polish the ends of the frets, then um, uh, they're still comfortable to play, but that way you've got the maximum amount of width uh, for playing surface. And um, so I'll hold this by hand. I find even the, the Stu Mac, the files, it's a little bit too much bevel. I forget what the angle is that they're using. So I'll just do the same thing, but I'll just come in a little bit. I'll just tilt angle the file a little bit. And I just do it by hand, and I'm sure that there will be people who will, who will say, 
oh, you know, you should measure this and it should be exactly a certain amount of, you know, number of degrees and so forth, whatever. Um, this works fine. It's very quick and easy. I'm almost done with this side of the neck. Um, and I'm not going to go through the whole process. I just wanted to show you, I mean, already I can feel the difference. There's a lot less drag on the file as you're cutting. Once you get down through the, the metal and you get to the wood, suddenly the thing feels like very slippery, like it's just... Uh, very easy to push the file along. And that's basically it. You know, I flip this around, do the other side, and um, and then uh, and then at that point, what I've done is I sort of created. Um, I've gotten into bare wood. I don't know if the camera can really see it or not. Uh, I'm not done with this side. I would do a little bit more, but just for the sake of making this a, a quicker video. Uh, I'm down into the wood right along the edge here, and you can see where the finish has been removed a little bit. And I'm not going to worry too much about that because, again, this is a road-worn guitar. It's all worn anyway. Um, but if I wanted to, to, to touch that up, since this lacquer is toned, meaning it's got colored, you know, it's the colored lacquer, or if it were an older guitar where the lacquer actually was genuinely el uh, yellowed with age, well, you got no choice but to do a little bit of uh, finish touch up there. You've got to mix up some dye in, you know, uh, uh, whatever medium you're going to use, uh, alcohol or whatever, and 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 try to get this matched. Um, if it's a new guitar, uh, where or newer, or if it's a poly finish where it's uh, pretty much clear, a lot of times you can just wipe on something um, uh, lacquer or whatever, you know, polyurethane, whatever, just a little bit, just to protect the wood, so it doesn't get dirty from your hands. I mean. Uh, you know, something like an Anderson where the back of the neck is white basically because it's got clear finish and if you leave a little narrow band of unfinished wood it will get brown from sweat and so forth and then you'll have sort of this telltale um, or telltale and then you'll have this telltale uh, stripe, you know, uh, where you know that the finish has been, re been removed so, you know, you would want to wipe something on there and you don't have to get crazy about like worrying about this is real simple stuff. It's quick and easy. Uh, anybody that does sort of um, store stock repair in a music store where they're dealing with this stuff all the time, especially like in the mid-Atlantic states, uh, you just get used to doing this stuff and you don't make a big deal of it. It's quick and easy. Boom, boom, boom. Knock it out. And, uh, and that's it. And then, you know, I would maybe take a little sandpaper, 220 grit, 320 grit, maybe put it on my fingertips and just do this a little bit just to kind of round and smooth the fret ends. I might wrap it around a block. It depends on how sort of pristine you need to get it. But essentially this guitar is about to get fret leveled anyway, so we're going to we're going to do the fret ends as part of that process. Right now I just want to get uh, the fret ends so that they're not protruding anymore. Uh, but that's it. Quick and simple. It takes uh, in some cases uh, 10 minutes. It's a very quick and easy thing to do. Thanks for watching.